Hello friends, today we will discuss self-filled concrete pavements, its concept and design. Self-filled concrete pavements are nowadays very popular on PMJSY roads because of their economy and ease of construction. Concept-wise, self-filled concrete pavements consist of formwork of plastic cells over the compacted subgrade and subbase and then these cells are filled with concrete. So, these plastic cells act as both the foam work as well as reinforcement for the pavement. And these cells are made from reclaimed high density polyethylene that is HDPE sheets of thickness 0.22 mm to 0.25 mm. Now, these are made from the waste plastic and these are available in the rolls of strips which are 50 to 100 mm wide means the depth of plastic cell is 50 to 100 millimeter so that you can keep your thickness of the concrete 50 to 100 millimeter depending upon the requirement of the design now these cells are made like this that a pair of strips are welded together at a distance of 300 millimeter interval so a, a stitching here or a welding here and a welding here then the third strip is taken and it is welded to the first pair of 300 meter interval so that this stitch lies at the center of the previous stitching and then another stitch will be at 300 millimeter then you take fourth one and this fourth one will have the joints exactly opposite to the first one so that is how basically you create this kind of grid and then this grid is filled with the concrete that is the basic concept of cell filled concrete pavement now these plastic cells do not have much strength and therefore to keep them in position we put spikes here or nails here to hold them in position and a nylon pad is also stretched so that they do not collapse during placing of the concrete the first step is the preparation of subgrade and as you all know subgrade forms the top 300 millimeter thick portion of the embankment and it should be prepared as per MORD specifications the top 300 millimeter of subgrade saw subgrade should be of good quality with CBR more than 5 percent and if subgrade is of sandy nature or silty nature then it should be compacted to 100% of maximum dry density as per IS2729 part 7. And if the subgrade is of clay nature, expensive black cotton soil, then it is compacted to a minimum of 95% of maximum dry density and field moisture content during compaction can be 2% higher than the optimum. The subbase can be of water bound macadam, it can be of wet mixed macadam or pressure run macadam, lime fly ash aggregate mixture or lime stabilized soil, any material. In fact, the specifications allow use of local available aggregates also such as muram and kankar, which are mixed with lime or fly ash. The local available material like natural gravel or soil aggregate mixture or even sand can also be used as sub-base material. And if natural material is not available, then the soil can be stabilized either with lime or cement so that it attains a CBI value of 20% and then it can also be used as sub-base material for self-filled concrete pavement. After you prepare the sub-base, then it is mandatory that a stone or concrete block a layer of stone or concrete block or brick on end edge that is vertical bricks should be laid on either side of the carriageway and this should project 50 to 100 millimeter above the sub base and they will be necessary for confinement and protection of the self-filled concrete pavement. Now because joint spacing between these blocks is very small and the arrangement of joints are also very unique. 
and concrete thickness is also very low 5200 millimeter with a unique nature of joints and therefore low transfer in CFC pavements is not through slab action. They are not rigid materials. They behave like a semi-flexible or semi-rigid material and therefore design of these pavements is based on elastic layer theory. NRIDA document do it yourself provides certain guidelines for selecting the thickness of granular subbase layer and the parameters here are the CBR of subgrade soil and design traffic cumulative standard axle repetitions in million and two options are given either you can provide a 100 millimeter thick CFC layer or it can be 75 millimeter thick self filled concrete layer. So if you know the design traffic let us say it is 1.2 million standard axles and CBR of subgrade soil lies somewhere between 5 and 7 percent then you can find out what would be the thickness of the sub base 150 millimeter. But if you provide the CFC layer of 75 millimeter then this is a set of graph. Here again if you go by the same traffic that is 1.2 million standard axles and CBR of subgrade is 6 percent between 5 and 7 then you need a thickness of about 250 millimeter. So to cater to the same traffic when you reduce the thickness of CFC layer you need to increase thickness of granular sub base. Another consideration is that if the number of present day commercial vehicles is more than 50 per day then 150 millimeter of cementitious sub base with a minimum 7 day strength of 1.5 MPa should be provided. After you provide sub base and you provide protection layer on both sides of the sub base then you design the concrete mix. It can be either conventional pavement concrete with 28 days strength of 30 MPa and slump of about 30 to 50 millimeter. Now here you are basically designing a mix for M30. You can also provide roller compacted concrete RCC as specified in clause 1502 of the specification of rural roads. This RCC can also be used for filling up the plastic cells and compact it with a roller. In case of RCC, the minimum characteristic strength will remain same that is 30 MPa. But flexural strength is not an important consideration because as I told you the this load transfer is not through slab action. Cement can be of any type, it can be ordinary portland cement, it can be pozzolana cement, it can be slag cement as per relevant IS code. If you are using OPC 53, then you can replace partially cement by fly ash. But remember, fly ash is not used if you are using PPC or PSC because this fly ash or slag is already present in the cement. The coarse aggregate, crushed stone aggregate or crushed gravel with impact value less than 30 percent, flatness index less than 40 percent and water absorption less than 3 percent should be used as coarse aggregate. Maximum size of aggregate 26.5 millimeter and if by chance water absorption is more than 3 percent then we carry out the soundness test and the loss in the aggregate weight after 5 cycles in sodium sulphate should not be more than 12 percent or 18 percent after 5 cycles in magnesium sulphate. And again roads with less than 50 CVPD gravels from river bed can also be used as coarse aggregate. Fine aggregate will be clean natural sand or crushed stone or a combination of the two as per IS383. But important consideration here is that fine aggregate will not have deleterious materials more than these limits. Clay lumps not more than 4 percent, coal and lignite more 1 percent and material passing 75 micron should not be 4 more than 4 percent in case of natural sand and more than 15 percent in case of crushed sand. Combined grading for coarse aggregate and fine aggregate should match with this table that is the range given and you have to mix coarse aggregate and fine aggregate in def definite proportion 
so that your grading is almost close to the midpoint of this range. And I have discussed this proportioning of aggregate earlier also. You can use any of the three methods to find out proportioning of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate to achieve the desired grading. Water, clean portable water as per IS-456, the pH value for water for mixing and curing can be up to 9. And normal procedure of concrete mix design as given in IRC-44 for M30 concrete is to be used. That is based on water cement ratio. Based on water cement ratio and based on the compressive strength, you find out what will be the proportioning of cement, sand and coarse aggregate. But when you are using roller compacted concrete, then design is not based on water cement ratio because RCC has a very low value of water cement ratio and therefore this design is based on aggregate cement ratio. And this is similar to what we did in case of dry line concrete. Now here, what we do that trial mixes of concrete are prepared with water content of 5%, 5.5%, 6%, 6.5% and 7% by weight of total material. And then you cast the cube of this concrete at these moisture content and trial cement aggregate ratio and find out the density of each cube. That means you take the weight of the cube before filling and after filling and then you draw a compaction curve. Each specimen here, each cube will be compacted by a special vibratory hammer in three layers. And after compaction, you find out what is the density of the cube. And then you make a plot between the moisture content and dry density. And that is similar to what you do in case of subgrade soil you draw a compaction curve and find out MDD and OMC. Once you know OMC and MDD, then we cast six cubes of 150 millimeter size at OMC and MDD and then determine their cube strength after seven days. And then you find out whether this strength is sufficient for M30 mix or not. If you do not get sufficient strength, then you change the cement content in the mixture and then repeat all these procedure. Now, once you have designed the base and you have designed the mix of concrete also, then we go to the construction steps. And the first construction step is similar to what we do in all construction of roads. What we do in other construction also, that we construct a magment, above that subgrade and then subbase. All these three constructions are done as per specifications of roads. Important point here is that the camber should be provided at subgrade level itself and should be maintained at subbase also. Because when you are filling the plastic cells with concrete, it will not be possible to change the camber. If, now, if the area lies in a high rainfall zone, that is having annual rainfall exceeding 1000 millimeter, then it is mandatory to provide a drainage layer as laid down in the road manual. After that, you provide a stone and concrete block or brick on end edge on either side of the carriageway, projecting 50 to 100 millimeter above sub base for confinement and protection of self filled concrete. Another important consideration here is that when you are providing self-filled concrete pavement, it is important to provide hard shoulders of 0.8 meter on either side. And these hard shoulders will give you the stability to the concrete blocks when trucks move close to the edge. Then next step is lay the formwork of plastic cells across the compacted subbase and put them under tension with iron spikes so that cells are close to squares in plan. Nylon threads passing at 10 mm below the top of the cell shall prevent the cells from collapsing while filling the cells with concrete. And once it is done, then fill the concrete into the cells to depth of 120 mm, which is about 20 mm higher than the cell's depth. So if the cell depth is 100 mm, 
then you put the concrete 120 millimeter so that after compaction you get proper density the iron spikes shall be removed after cells are filled with the concrete and then you compact the concrete using a static roller then dynamic roller and again the last pass will be of a static mode that should be sufficient for compaction and for a good finish after it is compacted then the concrete surface shall be covered with wet jute mats or paddy straw to prevent drying during hot weather and also for the purpose of curing of the concrete you can allow light traffic after two days of curing but heavy traffic should be allowed only after 14 days of the curing. There are certain advantages and disadvantages of self-filled concrete pavements. But the biggest advantage is that may, we are making use of recycled plastic. So we are basically using waste plastic and these cells are made from HDPE having a thickness of 0.22 to 0.25 millimeter. And because their joints are very closely spaced, there is no expansion and contraction and therefore maintenance of joint is eliminated. The cost of construction is considerably reduced when compared to conventional cement concrete payment. And it has been found that consumption of aggregate is almost reduced to 50% when compared to normal CC payment. The another advantage is that if the individual block fails, at a later date, it can be easily replaced without much effort with least cost. But few disadvantages also. The first is the preparation of the cells is cumbersome. I told you that these are made by stitching or by welding. And there are high chances of cells getting disturbed while placing the concrete and therefore it, they require very proper care. And due to slow progress because the entire process is labor intensive, the progress is very slow, the man and machinery efficiency is less than the normal construction. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please share with your friends and write your comments in the comment box.